Hi, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Wonder Snatch. By now, you should have seen that our next show is going to be bare back to the 80s, okay? It's going to be an 80s dance party where we're going to be singing all sorts of 80s mega mixes, okay? And I know the title may be a little bit controversial because the 80s wasn't a time you wanted to go bare back. So I'm going to be talking a bit about that today, all right? The AIDS crisis in the 80s and how it kind of devastated the gay community and what ramifications it had since then, okay? And also today, I'm going to be challenging myself to do a Snatch Game character, okay? Of course, who else I'm going to do when I'm talking about the AIDS crisis other than Nancy Reagan, first lady of the United States of America during the 1980s, and she had not a huge part to play for the AIDS crisis, and that's why we're talking about her today. All right? <laughs> so if you're going to see me try to get into character impersonation for the very first time, <laughs> this is going to go one of two ways. Um, please stay tuned, okay? And like and subscribe, and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Okay, so blocked everything. Okay, so today I don't, don't even need my face tapes because I don't really need that lift if I want to get that old lady kind of a droopy lid. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so Snatch Game. This is something that's always bugged me that I've never really done celebrity impersonations and I hope I can pull this through. Okay, um, yeah, stay tuned to the end where I, where I answer a few Snatch Game questions in character. Okay, another PSA. In gay lingo, barebacking does not mean riding a horse without a saddle or some fashionable design of a dress, okay? A bad backing is actually the practice of having sex without a condom, okay? So, um, obviously, in the 80s, this was not encouraged, okay? And probably everyone was so terrified of catching HIV that nobody ever barebacked. Um, but now, it's, of course, condom use has declined with the use of PrEP and, and a general feeling that HIV is no longer a death sentence for most people. So that's actually a huge privilege, okay, for people to be able to bareback these days. So the title, Bareback to the 80s, is a bit of a whimsical reference to that, okay, that we, we're going to go back to the 80s and we're also celebrating the privilege that all the last few decades of hard science and advocacy has provided the gay community these days, okay? Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get started on this Nancy Reagan makeup. Okay, I've got all my different Coraline contours here. There's going to be a lot of contouring today to try to change my face into this picture of Nancy Reagan. It's, it's a really, really nice forward shot of Nancy Reagan, so I'm going to try to see whether I can achieve this face. I'm going to start with my regular base, 5W. Scraping out the last bit of this AOA. I know this, this foundation is only like a dollar, but I'm using every last bit of it. Okay, so the AIDS crisis of the 1980s. This was a really dark time in LGBT history. The virus, HIV, appeared on the scene probably in the late 70s, but it took a few years for people to realize what was happening when people started to die in very very strange and unusual ways in the 80s okay and most of these victims seemed to be gay men okay so people were turning up in eds like suddenly breathless or having really weird rashes and sores that people couldn't explain and of course this wasting and weight loss okay which made them look really really emaciated okay soon doctors figured out that all these weird symptoms and ailments were all what we call opportunistic infections which means that they were caused by um, bacteria viruses and fungi that usually do not affect people at all okay that usually these are very common in the community okay and rarely ever cause disease so it was something to do with the immune system okay so what was initially called the gay plague was renamed at first GRID okay G-R-I-D or gay related immune deficiency syndrome okay and later on this was changed to AIDS because they wanted to they, uh, I think there was some push against associating it with just gay people because of course anyone could get it but because of the sexual liberation of the 70s and the sex positivity around the queer community at the time the gay community was a harbinger for this disease in the 80s okay I remember growing up in the 80s and 90s and kind of learning about HIV and you know when I first came out, of course, it was terrifying that, you know, sex was really something that really scared a lot of, I mean, well, me especially, because, you know, every time you even touch someone, you're, you're racked with guilt and racked with, like, fear for, you know, weeks, <laughs> wondering if you caught anything. And, you know, education was not the greatest, okay, around that time. It wasn't so easy just to go online and get information about this. A lot, a lot of what was going around was all myths or fear-mongering, okay? And of course, with the stigma and discrimination attached to HIV 
and um, the scary images of uh, AIDS patients, this was of course something that really instilled fear in a lot of uh, young gay people in my generation. Okay, so now that the base is done, I'm going to try to sculpt my face into this picture, this contour of Nancy Reagan. Okay, I'm, it, it's going to be completely different from drag makeup, okay? So first I'm going to go in something lighter, so I'm going to go in with 7W, okay? And this time, instead of doing a big round beige rainbow, I'm just mainly going to go on the sides, okay? She has quite a masculine forehead. Okay, and she's got really nice cheekbones, so this is going to be more rounded here. And the nose contour is much wider than my usual. I'm going to use this AOA contour stick also, which I bought like ages ago and never opened. Okay, I'm going to sculpt out the eye, which is going to be very hollowed out socket kind of thing. Okay, and it's gonna go right here. No wing. That is very creamy. Okay, of course the AIDS crisis has been portrayed in many movies and TV shows. Movies like Philadelphia, Boys in the Band, Angels in America, all have depicted the AIDS crisis in many different ways. Okay, and TV shows of course like Pose, which was set in the 80s, that showed the ballroom scene and how they dealt with the AIDS crisis. And even American Horror Story had a whole season dedicated to the AIDS crisis in the NYC season where it depicted AIDS as some sort of a gay serial killer. And of course the most recent one, Fellow Travelers, which was a really good show, okay, where they followed this gay, a pair of gay lovers all the way from like the McCarthy era in the 50s all the way to the present day. Okay, and one of them of course was of the, is dying of AIDS. Fellow Travelers was one of the shows which really exemplified how the devastation of the AIDS crisis is really magnified, okay, due to prejudice, internal homophobia, and external homophobia of people making the policies and of people um, in position to help the crisis, okay, the politicians. Okay, I'm gonna blend this out with a brush today. Okay, and of course, a lot of the blame has been put on the Reagans, okay? Ronald Reagan was president, from 1981 to 1989, and the AIDS crisis was definitely um, during his watch, okay? And because he was a Republican and very conservative, he did not even address the crisis until way into his second term. Okay, now I'm going in my highlights. This time in my highlights, I think I'm not going to use so much white, okay? Because the white really makes everything look a bit more draggy. I'm just going to use a lighter cream, okay, from my Makeup Forever, maybe that one. First, I'm going to highlight under the brow, okay, and this time the brow is going to go straight across and down, very, very um, low and thin. Down the nose, quite broad. The apple of the cheeks. And of course, here is where we come to talk about Nancy Reagan herself. See, I don't want it to be too glaring white. I want to make, get some realism here. Okay, so Nancy Reagan, of course, um, she she was the first lady of time. She is most has been most criticised for being silent on the entire thing. Okay, that she did not even talk about AIDS at all during her tenure in the White House. She was known to be very vocal for other things such as criminalizing drug use, okay, with a just say no campaign, but she famously didn't say anything about the AIDS crisis. And it's quite um, sad because, you know, both Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan were both actors in Hollywood before they became politicians, okay, and they were good friends of Rock Hudson, who very famously died of AIDS, and Rock Hudson tried to reach out to her and uh, Ronald Reagan, but of course were shunned. Okay, so I think the base of my face is more or less there. You know, I've got wrinkles on my forehead already. I don't even think I need to contour those. Okay, how do I look? Doesn't look like very much now, but um, I'm going to powder all this and I'll be right back just to talk a bit more about Nancy Reagan. Okay, so I'm all powdered now. You can kind of see the face shapes there. Okay, I, I'm actually quite pleased with the wig that I styled. It looks quite Golden Girls and everything, but I think that's a uh, very Nancy Reagan style too. Okay, going into my Ulti mattes. Okay, all neutrals today, no colour at all. I'm going to try to 
sculpt this face. She doesn't have a lot of blown out like blending and everything like that, but I really need to try to recreate this eye shape, which is a little bit downturned, okay? So I'm just going to get my pencil brush on a dark, I think I'm going to use granite, which is a grey. I'm going to start sculpting this eye, okay? So very straight across, a dip into the nose on the side, to the corner of my eye here. So I'm just going over my eyeball there. Okay, so Nancy Reagan. She was the first lady, as I mentioned, she was the first lady. She was quite a character, and I think she would be a great character for Snatch Game, actually. <laughs> of course, as I mentioned, she did not pay very much attention to the AIDS crisis, but she did have this campaign called Just Say No, where she was really railing against uh, recreational drug use, okay? And she supported her husband's policies of mandatory minimums for drug, for, for drug offences, okay? Although it looked like, you know, commonsensical, very good policies to reduce drug use in young people, it was enforced in a very unbalanced way, okay, and affected minority communities much more than it did, okay, white communities, okay, because everyone in the 80s were using drugs, okay. The white people were using cocaine, but this was repackaged to crack cocaine for the black community, and the black community was bearing the brunt of all these policies of the Reagan administration, okay, and a Just Say No campaign really solidified people's attitudes towards drugs around that time. Very puritanical, very black or white. Okay, Singapore, of course, has one of the strictest drug laws in the world. So, um, I'm, I am coming from a place where recreational drug use is really almost unheard of. Okay, but of course, if you think about it, when you deal with drug crimes, you really need to be able to have the infrastructure to support your policies, okay? And of course, this also ties into the AIDS crisis because these were the same communities that were most affected by HIV and AIDS, okay? Especially those who are also using intravenous drugs. And of course, Everyone can point to the recent example of Oregon, who a few years ago actually decriminalized all recreational drug use, okay, thinking that that would help to solve the problem. But in America, I think it is such a complex problem, you can't see it as such a black and white. You can't just criminalize or decriminalize something and expect something to go <laughs> right, okay? Because in America, the infrastructure for supporting drug addiction and everything is so poor that when they decriminalized drug in Oregon, it just became such a huge problem on the streets because they didn't have programs to help rehabilitate people or to help people get back on their feet. People just use drugs in the streets and everything. So of course, that's not what you want either. Everything has to be balanced. And the lesson here is that when you make policies like this, you really have to look at the community on a whole and see what it can support or not. Okay, so Nancy Reagan's eyes, they will go down a little bit. Okay, so no, it's not like a snatched queen lift, drag queen lift this time. Okay, Nancy Reagan was also a little bit of a kook because um, she was really into astrology. Okay, apparently when there was an assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan, one of the first things she did was to call her astrologer. She has been made fun of that. Okay, and apparently a lot of the presidential events of the White House around that time were all <laughs> held on astrologically significant dates. I'm trying to fight the urge of doing a <laughs> big wing. I'm just going to set the underbrow with a little bit of pink cashmere and almond. Okay, now going in the brows. The brows were thin, of course. Okay, and they kind of like went down like a real woman's brow. I'm going to try to match my thing. I'm going to use um, chocolate. While she ignored the AIDS crisis, Nancy Reagan was a huge advocate for stem cell research, actually. So actually, she did have some quite progressive attitudes, okay? And this was mainly because Ronald Reagan himself was a patient of Alzheimer's disease, okay? And there was a lot of stem cell research going on around that time on treating Alzheimer's and other neurological degenerative conditions with stem cells. So she actually tried to campaign George Bush to increase spending on stem cell research. And of course, stem cell research is something that evangelicals really don't like because you have to sacrifice embryos to do it. So she had some progressive ideas. And you know, um, there are some reports which have said that Nancy Reagan really wanted to help the AIDS community and she did ha try to get Ronald Reagan to address the crisis earlier, okay? But this was ignored, okay? But we'll never know whether that's true or not. I'm going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit. Okay, let's go on. Okay, now I'm going to try contouring my face to look like Nancy Reagan. I think I need to deepen up the eye socket a bit more. 
Okay, so Nancy Reagan died in 2016, okay, of congestive heart failure. And around this time, some really interesting allegations <laughs> and rumours came out about her. So apparently when she was a young actress, she wasn't opposed to performing oral sex on a lot of people in Hollywood, okay? So she was actually known as a DJ queen, okay? This is like an aspect of her which shocked a lot of people and what makes her an amazing character for Snatch Game. This is, of course, rumoured to be before she met Ronald Reagan, but she used to be very amenable to the casting couch, allegedly. She did come across as very, very puritanical and conservative in the, in the White House because of her silence in HIV and also her Just Say No campaign. But you know, there's this whole aspect of her which really went against all this. Okay, and when she died, Hillary Clinton actually made a gaffe and commended her being a pioneer of the AIDS crisis because she opened up conversations, okay, during that time. Of course, Hillary Clinton had to retract this gaffe, okay, and it's almost like saying Hitler was amazing because he helped to create NATO or something like that. Her silence on the whole HIV crisis did spark a lot of conversation, but she herself had no responsibility in anything. Okay, so that's enough about Nancy Reagan. We'll come back to her later when I do my Snatch Game questions. Okay, I think I'm ready to contour the rest of the face. Okay, I'm using a cool colour from my Moira Cosmetics. Contour the temples first. Okay, so back to the AIDS crisis. The good things that came out from the AIDS crisis, I mean, of course, it's nothing is really good because, you know, of all the people that have died. It really did help us come up with a good way of getting drugs approved much quicker, okay, by the FDA. The accelerated approval program by the FDA was a result of the AIDS crisis because so many people were dying and the drugs in development, AZT at the time, were so slow coming to market that activists actually campaigned and campaigned, okay, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who was um, head of the NIH at the time, Activist groups like ACT UP did things like die-ins where they pretended to die in front of churches and government buildings, okay, and they would harass, okay, Anthony Fauci in the lobby of the NIH and everything, trying to get him to, you know, expedite these drugs. And of course, this did result in uh, the fir very first antiretrovirals, uh, such as AZT, being approved at a much quicker rate, okay, and this had probably saved thousands of lives. Okay, and this is the same approval pathway that has been used to expedite the approval of the COVID vaccines, okay, recently. So now I'm contouring a little bit of my chin here to make it a bit sharper. Okay, so that's the kind of like face shape that I'm kind of going for. Okay, I'm using my same foundation as I used earlier just to cut the crease. Okay, so this is a very skin colour cut crease. Very straight across. Just to open up the eye a little bit. You know, during the 80s, it was really also a rallying time for the whole community to really stand by each other. Okay, and... Uh, the, this is when, you know, we hear stories of, you know, lesbian or lesbian sisters really nursing gay men who are really sick and people really stepping up to, you know, help to run shelters and get people access to HIV drugs. In Singapore, of course, um, Action for AIDS, which, was a, which is a NGO that helps to promote abstinence and to help to promote condom use and safe sex was started in 1980s as well. And in Singapore, our numbers have been not bad, okay? The number of AIDS cases in Singapore, ha in Singapore has never been like super, super high. So usually I like set that with white or something, but today I'm going to set it with more of a bone colour. Vanilla. Just a very small wing. And the eye, bring that in a little bit. Amazing how just a little bit of a line here and there, you know, changes your face completely. I really, really find makeup so fascinating like that. I mean, look, this side without that little line and this side with just that little line there just makes it, just gives it a little bit of an oomph. Okay, she has very little under eye. Darken, deepen this area here so it looks a little bit more real. She has quite nice blush, a very, very subtle kind of blush, so I'm be using, just mixing these two peach, peach colours together. She did, did seem to wear a lot of blush, you always see her wearing, you know, tons of blush in the apples of the cheeks, whenever she made an appearance. Um, there was of course this very momentous occasion where they had an AIDS quilt, where people managed to put up the names 
of people who have were lost to the AIDS crisis. It's one of the largest piece of community folk art okay, in the world and it first debuted in the, Washington, in the mall in Washington and has been displayed in many places all around the world since then. So the nose is going to be a bit broader and you need to contour the tip of the nose to make it look a little bit different too. So using the same sculpt and bronze, I'm bringing the nose contour down much wider than my usual nose. Deepen up some of the lines on my face. Some of the bad things that have come up with, from the AIDS crisis was of course all the policies okay, and laws that came around during that time. There was so much stigma and fear. A lot of countries made laws that actually criminalised okay, the movement of people with HIV such that you know, some, some countries would not even let people who are HIV positive enter their, enter their shores. Okay, and you know, even in Singapore, we had laws that uh, that wouldn't allow immigrants who are HIV positive to move here. Okay, just contouring a bit of a chin. And I'm just reshaping the face a little bit. You can see my face is starting to take shape. Okay, Nancy Reagan style. She does have a little bit of a eye bag here. I'm just going to contour my own eye bag. There were also laws that came about that... Um, that wouldn't allow any gay man to donate blood, okay, for years, okay. I think they only recently lifted this law in America, okay. But, you know, if you were gay, you just could not give blood because of the risk of HIV. When, when obviously, anyone could get HIV these days. Okay, the nose is a little bit pointed this way. Okay, Singapore recently also had a law that would criminalise people for having sex with someone without telling them the HIV status. Okay, and this law was recently just struck down a few weeks ago, which is, you know, quite a big deal because this actually helps people realise that, you know, having HIV itself is not a criminal offence, okay? And if you get treatment, okay, with all the new technologies that have come up these days, which I'm going to get into later, it's not a death sentence and you shouldn't be held liable, okay, if you protect yourself and be responsible for your own health these days. Okay, how's that going? Do I look... Hmm, yeah, starting to come together, okay. Um, I think I need to add a few few more wrinkles and everything. Now going back into my pencil brush and going into the darker shade just to accentuate everything. Okay, just to give it a little bit more shape. I'm going over my nostril to give this the nose a little bit more definition. Contouring the side of the nose. Okay, I'm just going to add, add a few more of these details here and there. Okay, and I will be right back. I'm not sure if I look like Nancy Reagan. I just look like a, maybe just a, any generic old person. <laughs> I think maybe the hair and the jewellery will, will help to, you know, pull this together. But yeah, okay, so I'm just going to go into my highlights now. I've been using this Vampire Veil recently and this is like really good. It's almost as good as the MAC Shimmering White. Okay, just using this to accentuate some high points on the face. Okay, using this domed pencil brush, I'm just going to highlight the nose here. Okay, just, just looking at the, at the reference picture and seeing really where all the high points of her face is. So definitely there. I think under the eye, she also was quite bright here. Can you see all the, these little bits of white really make such a difference. All this shading, put some under the brow. There are some effects of the AIDS crisis, which I think there's some interesting hypotheses that I've heard. Okay, Dan Savage, who hosts his own podcast for Sex Advice, has this theory, which I heard him say, I'm not sure whether it's his theory or whether he's read it somewhere, that um, the AIDS crisis is the reason why most mainstream gay people are so conservative these days, okay? He thinks that the more freewheeling, more liberal-minded homosexuals and people in the queer community were all wiped out by AIDS, okay? And what who were left were all the people who had a bit more conservative bent, okay, on what gay relationships should look like. This was kind of a double-edged sword, okay? These were the ones that actually fought for marriage equality, okay? Where they tried to depict gay relationships being as stable and monogamous as straight couples, okay? And this helped to push forward a sanitized version of uh, gay life 
and um, helped to push for marriage equality, but at the same time, it left a lot of the rest of the queer community in the dust. Okay, people like the trans community, the kink community, all were kind of like you know demonized and made to look like othered. Okay, and so this was a polarizing time in LGBT history, and right now I think the conversations around kink, polyamory. Um, asexualism, transgender people, all, all these things, have are st the conversations are only starting around now. So as um, mainstream gays distance themselves from these communities and you know you start seeing things like gay republicans, this was, in some people's opinion, a result of the AIDS crisis. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, now I've got to draw on my lips. Lips, she has thin lips, thin waspy lips, okay, so I don't know how I'm going to reduce this to a thin lip. I'm just going to underdraw my lip, okay, and fill it in with a very light peach, using this RuPaul lip liner, which is not great. Okay, I think I'm going to have to cover my lips. Let's cover my lips foundation and try to redraw as thin as I can. Yeah, she had almost no upper lip. Okay, try to fill in this AOA, velvet lips. Old lady lips. <laughs> Old white lady lips. I'm just going to try to contour that a little bit, okay? I'm just going to try to clean up that to make it look a bit more real. Okay, so we're all the way back to the whole idea of barebacking. Over the last few decades, um, a lot of advances have actually allowed people to have the privilege of barebacking, okay, with minimal HIV transmission. A lot of studies have shown that if you are undetectable, that is, if your HIV is treated, okay, with antiretroviral drugs such that there's no detectable virus in your blood, you can't transmit the virus to someone else, okay, um, even if you're not wearing a condom. And if you don't have HIV, you can take a medication called Truvada or any of the other generics, and this is a technique called PrEP, okay, pre-exposure prophylaxis. If you're on this medication, the chances of you contracting HIV from a person who is HIV positive is also much, much less. So these two strategies together have allowed zero discordant couples where one person has HIV and one person doesn't to reduce transmissions to nearly zero, even without the use of a condom. So, you know, barebacking these days, as I, as I have to stress again, is a huge privilege, okay? People could not do this in the 80s, okay? But although, um, you know, HIV treatment and PrEP has reduced this to zero, condom use is still required to reduce transmission of things like syphilis, gonorrhea, and all these other things. And these STIs are actually on the rise now, okay, because condom use has declined, okay? In Singapore, condom use, you know, th th these are some stats from... These are some stats from AFA. Condom use has kind of stayed stable, but you know, there is a little bit of reporting bias here. Everywhere else in the world, it seems that condom use is declining, okay? So um, take this with a pinch of salt. The PSA here is really, please protect yourself, okay? And your sexual partner. Underdrawn lips a lot. Okay, I really look like an old lady now. Okay, so I think I'm almost done. I'm gonna throw on the wig I styled, which I'm pretty proud of too. Also, my little outfit which I had to put together for this Nancy Reagan illusion. Okay, and I'll be right back uh, to wrap up and also do my little snatch game. <laughs> Alright, so this is my Nancy Reagan look. <laughs> how, do I, how do I do? I think I kind of look a bit like her. Okay, not bad for my first try for celebrity impersonation. <laughs> I mean, I look like a generic old lady from the 80s. Um, maybe even Margaret Thatcher or something. And yeah, I found the smallest lashes in my collection and I actually managed to put them on <laughs> and this hair turned out amazing okay I have a little tutorial on how I made it okay uh, it's this is actually a $10 cosplay wig from Harajuku <laughs> okay yes and so that was my video on the AIDS crisis in the 80s okay it was a terrible time for the LGBT community but we are in a much better place now okay and we are actually looking to reduce transmissions of HIV okay with the help of U equals U and PrEP to zero by 2030 okay and hopefully that's an achievable goal for everyone in the world all right so if you like this video don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel come to my 80s party okay bear back to the 80s but it's going to be crazy 80s party okay and um yeah um stay tuned for my little snatch game quiz i have my little cards here which i'm going to be holding up as nancy reagan <laughs> okay answering some snatch game questions, okay? So, yep, I'll see you on that other side. Welcome to the new Snatch Game!
Hello, I'm your host, RuPaul. Freaky Fanny is so freaky. Instead of shaking hands, she shakes. Oh, Ru, Freaky Fanny is so freaky. Instead of shaking hands, she shakes her finger. <laughs> because, you know, just say no. Just say no to everything, darling. <laughs> I don't know why my Nancy Reagan voice is like a Dame Edna voice. I guess she has a bit of a text. Let's, let's try a bit of a Texan draw. Why are we? Why are we? Why, why are we? Hungry Hannah is so hungry. The only thing that fills her up is a 10 inch. Why are we? Why are we? Hungry Hannah. Hungry Hannah is so hungry that the only thing that can fill her up is a 10 inch tonsil tickler. Did you know that my tonsils have been tickled so many times that I've been called BJ Queen? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> the tonsil tickler. Yeah, these are my old Disney cards. Okay, let's try another one. Sally the Psychic is so slutty. Instead of reading your palm, she reads your... Hi, Ruth. Sally the Psychic is so slutty that instead of reading your palm, she reads my... Silence at whole HIV AIDS epidemic. Yes, I'm burning in hell right now for my silence and whole HIV AIDS epidemic and neglecting the LGBT community when they needed me the most. That's not funny, but it's true. <laughs> Alright, okay, if you like this video and you want to see more, please sound off in the comments who else I should do for Snatch Game. Okay, and check out my other videos. I turned myself into a banana for a comedy festival. And also, Jessica Rabbit, one of the, my favorite movies in the 80s. <laughs>